If you were to stop someone in the street and ask them, what do you really want from life? Chances are, they're not gonna say, what I want is a Subaru Outback that's a little bit quicker and can tow more. But for some people, that's exactly what they've been waiting for. And that's why this, this is for them. That's right, Subaru has updated the Outback and they've also added a turbo petrol variant, one that's faster and one that can tow more. Now over the last couple of days, we've driven it exactly how you should as well. Peak hour traffic, everything you can imagine. Off-road, you can see it's absolutely filthy. And we're gonna show you what it's like to drive. I'm gonna tell you about its practicality, its safety, its pricing, its features, the lot. I'm also gonna tell you something about the Outback that no other reviewer on the planet will probably tell you. And that is how to get into the car if you don't have the key. Hmm, it's at the end, watch it. Hmm. But if you wanna read the full review, go to carsguide.com.au and give us a like and subscribe. Now a long time ago, the Subaru Outback used to have a turbo diesel. It used to have a V6 petrol as well. Sadly, they're not with us anymore. No, the new generation came along and they gave us a new four-cylinder petrol engine, a 2.5 litre petrol engine. Sadly though, it only had 138 kilowatts of power. 245 newton metres just wasn't enough. I mean it is, but not if you towed really. And that's why this, this, this is fantastic. This is a 2.4 litre turbo petrol engine. It's the new turbocharged engine. 183 kilowatts, 350 newton metres. Whoa. The extra grunt has meant Subaru could increase the brake towing capacity by 400 kilograms. So the brake towing capacity of the non-turbo Outback is two tonnes, and for the turbo, it's 2.4 tonnes. Subaru says the extra grunt makes it 22% faster when it sprints from zero to 100 kilometers an hour. That's almost a quarter faster. Now, all Subaru Outbacks have a CVT transmission. It's a continuously variable transmission. And all Subaru Outbacks are all-wheel drive. There's something else I want to show you. Come on. It's this. Can you see it? Can you see that? You know what that is? That is 213 millimetres of ground clearance. That's right, Whoa, look at it. Do you wanna go for a drive? I wanna go for a drive. Let's go for a drive. Okay, let's go for a drive. Now we are in the turbo variant here, because of course we are, that's what you wanna find out about, but over the course of the last couple of days at this Subaru Outback launch, we have driven both the turbo and the non-turbo, and we've driven them on all the kinds of roads you'll drive on. We, we started off in city traffic and we crawled our way through peak hour. We drove onto motorways, which was still a bit of a parking lot, and then traffic freed up and we were zooming along at 110, and we worked our way all the way up to the Blue Mountains on Australia's east coast. And if you've driven to the Blue Mountains before, you will know that there's a lot of steep inclines. And this was a really good opportunity to see how the turbo compared to the non-turbo. And I've got to say, the difference is it's night and day. They feel like completely different cars in terms of the power delivery. So going up those steep inclines, the non-turbos, and I've known this from driving them in the past, just really struggled. Like they kept with the speed limit and there was no, no issues really, but they just didn't feel like they had much in reserve. They felt like they were running out of puff. Your foot was to the floor, they were making a lot of noise and you know, they were just going up a hill. The turbos, on the other hand, just flung themselves up the hill. Seriously, that felt like a different car completely. Um, 183 kilowatts, throwing you up that hill. It was like somebody pushing you in the, in the back the whole way up. Um, it's really impressive. Great power, great torque. There's a small delay in terms of that power delivery. You put, put your foot down and woof, off you go. Um, and it's exactly what this car needed. Both cars have got CVTs. Now, they are continuously variable transmissions. I'm, I'm not a fan of CVTs, um, mainly because you put your foot down and they don't really do much for your acceleration. Uh, there's a lot of engine noise, you put your foot down and they don't seem to accelerate as well as, say, regular automatics. That's not as noticeable in the turbo because you've already got so much grunt that you're getting up those hills and you're overtaking with plenty of mumbo anyway. So it's not as noticeable, that, that sort of lack of acceleration or that lackluster response when you've got a CVT. 
Now, over the last couple of days, we've taken these cars on all the kinds of roads, you will as well. We've done dirt, we've done gravel, we've done sand, mud, we've done an off-roading course. And look, we've known for a long time that Subaru's all-wheel drive systems are excellent. And they build their cars with extra ground clearance as well. This has got 213 millimeters of ground clearance. And that will get you places a lot of SUVs out there, rivals to this car, just won't be able to go at all. Got Now all Subaru Outbacks, turbos and non-turbos, have got soft suspension. So they're like, they're like lounge rooms on wheels. They're very comfortable to drive, but they feel planted as well. The steering is good. Now keep in mind that this isn't a Toyota Land Cruiser. You can't go places that that beast can go or a Nissan Patrol or something like that. It doesn't have a low range four wheel drive setting or anything like that. But I've got to say this all wheel drive system is fantastic for dirt, gravel, mud, and a few other little adventures as well. <laughs> hey, um, we haven't spoken about something been meaning to bring it up for quite a while now. That's right, pricing. Now, as you can imagine, the turbocharged variants do cost more. Subaru calls them the XT. So at the top of the range, you've got the Touring XT. Below that, you've got the Sport XT. Now, those turbocharged cars sit above the non-turbocharged cars in the lineup. So you've got the Integrate Outback, the Sport, and the Touring as well. Do you want to talk standard features? Yeah, let's talk standard features. All Outbacks come standard with LED headlights, LED fog lights, and LED running lights. There's probably a quick way of saying that, but they also come with roof rails, privacy glass, and 18-inch alloy wheels. Inside, there's this 11.6-inch central touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto that's standard across the range. They all have dual-zone climate control, power front seats, a proximity key, push-button start, X-mode drive modes, and paddle shifters. Stepping up to the sport grade adds sat-nav, a power tailgate, heated front seats and sports pedals. The touring grade gets a 9-speaker Harman Kardon sound system. The rest get a standard 6-speaker stereo unit. The touring also has a heated steering wheel with Nappa leather seats, while the Intergrade has cloth and the sport has water repellent ones. The touring also comes with a CD player. Yeah, I think a gramophone was too big for the car. Apart from the new turbo engine joining the lineup, the updates to the Outback range are really minimal and include a redesigned central screen, a new layout of the steering wheel buttons, a Type-C USB port's been added up front, and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto too. Oh, the Outback looks like a hiking boot, but with wheels. I love its chunky wheel arches and roof rails. I love that it's sort of an SUV, but more of a station wagon, just raised higher. You can tell a sport grade by the blacked out grille and green elements in the roof rails and the stitching on the seats inside. The XT has dual exhaust, but Subaru hasn't really made a feature of it. So the only real way to tell is by the XT badge on the tailgate. Subaru says that after a combination of open and urban roads, the non-turbo, the 2.5 litre petrol engine, should be getting 7.3 litres per 100 kilometres. How much does the turbocharged engine get? Well, 9 litres per 100 kilometres is what Subaru says, but we've been seeing oh, 12s. That's not very fuel efficient. I mean, the power's good, but not fuel efficient. Also not fuel efficient is not having a hybrid outback or an electric out back. Come on Subaru, you know what to do. The Outback is a roomy five-seater. Look, I'm 191 centimetres tall and I still have plenty of room to sit behind my driving position. And headroom is good too. There's excellent cabin storage with cup holders here, big door pockets, seat back pockets, plus directional air vents down there and USB ports. Oh, someone's a bit tired. Um, yeah, okay, let's, let's have a look on the boot. The boot is big, 522 litres big, or one Richard Berry. Oh. The Outback scored the maximum five-star ANCAP rating in 2021. They all come standard with an excellent array of advanced safety tech, including Subaru's EyeSight system, which uses two cameras to scan the road ahead. There's AEB, Autonomous Emergency Steering, Lane Keeping Assistance, Recross Traffic Alert with Reverse Braking and Blind Spot Warning. 
The Subaru Outback is covered by Subaru's five year unlimited kilometer warranty. Now services are capped, but over five years, it's about $2,600 for five years for both the turbo and the non-turbo cars. Now I'm gonna tell you something that no one in any review has ever probably told you before. Did you know that you can access the car using a pin code. That's right, it's here on page 128 of the Outback Manual, 128, look it up, you'll see it. You can actually use a pin number to get into your car and that means you can leave your key fob in your car, go for a surf and then come back and then re-enter the pin number again, just using the rubbery boot latch that you use to open the car. It's amazing, I'm not gonna show you now. I've done it in a video before, you can look it up, but now you know. Hmm. Very good. The Subaru Outback, it's always been practical. It's always been comfortable. It's always been great at little adventures off-road, dirt, gravel, mud, that type of thing. It loves it thanks to its all-wheel drive system and excellent ground clearance. But something was missing. That's right, more power and more towing capacity. And now it's here thanks to this turbocharged variant. It's something that a lot of people really were looking for in life. Now, if you want to read the full review, go to carsguide.com.au and give us a like and subscribe.